Welcome to the Five Star Flex. I'm your host, Philip Dukes, a.k.a. Dukes D. Scoop. Check me out on Twitter and Instagram at Dukes D. Scoop, and make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. Now that we got that out of the way, yeah, I know you saw the title. You're thinking, yeah, Colorado, hmm, what's he going to talk about? Colorado fans probably thinking this is another hit piece on Deion Sanders and family. But no, nah, dog, it's a little bit different. See, what I'm doing, this is my version for wrestling fans. This is my version of the Montreal Screwjob. Yeah. This is purely unadulterated shoot material. No clearance. Sanitary, Luke Stampini, they don't know this is coming. All right, dude. But I'm just looking around, and I had some questions I wanted to pose, and I just wanted to really take the gloves off and dive in to where nobody else is really diving. See, there's all this high-level hate and this, you know, this the, the, these assumptions and perceptions and all of this and why, we, why they feel this way and why they do these things when it comes to people's opinions on Colorado. But nobody really dives down into it, and that's what I'm going to do today. All right, so I got a question. Let's get started. What do Purdue, Arkansas, Wake Forest, Michigan State, and Houston all have in common? Give up? Cool. They're all Power 5 teams in the year 2023 that had four and eight records. Sounds like another school I know, a real popular school. Colorado, same record. Now, let's for the sake of this exercise, let's extract. Let's 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 really focus in on Arkansas and Michigan State. Arkansas, super rich history, right? The home of JB Hunt, Walmart, even, right? Tyson Foods, who doesn't like Tyson Chicken? Jerry Jones, Jimmy Jones, football royalty, celebrity status. People love their Razorbacks. Why aren't we talking about the Razorbacks like we talk about Colorado? Michigan State, they arguably made the best head coach and hire in last year's cycle in Jonathan Smith from Oregon State, who also brought along a very, very electrifying quarterback with them. Plenty to talk about. Plenty to speculate about. They're losing some good players in the portal as well. They're gaining some good players in the portal. Why are we talking about Michigan State? Their fans love them. Okay. Let's talk about the most popular teams when it comes to college football. You got Ohio State. You got Georgia. You got Bama. You got defending national champion Michigan. Teams that are winning at a clip that their media coverage is 1,000% justified. So how is Colorado arguably the most talked about program in college football right now. I think that it's not just the love that these teams have that makes them talked about, but it's the hate. What's stronger than love? What is the yin to love's yang? And I think the hate is what has Colorado here. So that begs the question, why do we hate Colorado? Hmm. Let's dig into it. Did you hate Colorado years ago? Did you hate Colorado during the miracle at Michigan? Did you hate Colorado when Eric Bieniemy was tearing it up? Did you hate Colorado when Rashawn Salam was the guy? God bless him. Did you? Or did you just start focusing on Colorado when Deion Sanders got there? Hmm. Now we get into the nitty gritty. So. The relevancy that Colorado has right now is directly tied to Coach Prime and everything that comes along with him. So now today we're going to dive into why people hate Colorado and Coach Prime, Deion Sanders. The biggest reason, hold up, before I even go there, this is a very special topic to me. Why? Because I'm not supposed to be here in a lot of people's eyes. I shouldn't be on this screen in front of you. My slang talking college park, Georgia, gold Cartier glasses wearing double chain, double ropes, ice on my neck, saying what he wants to say, not playing by the rules. He doesn't have a journalism degree. He hasn't been 100% on his predictions. 
this guy was on a message, boys. I shouldn't be here, right? But I'm here. So this resonates well with me because Deion Sanders, in a lot of people's eyes, shouldn't be in that role. And I'm going to get to why. And it's part of the reason why people hate Colorado. One of the biggest reasons people hate Colorado is because they cannot separate Deion Sanders, the player, from Coach Prime. There's a difference. And that works in his favor and against him. But right now, we're going to talk about why it works against him. See, Deion Sanders told the NFL that nobody was going to have enough money to pay him outright. That they were going to have to put him on layaway before he even stepped on the field. That's my kind of talk. <laughs> but a lot of people don't believe in that type of talk. They don't believe in high stepping into the end zone. They don't believe in playing a game for the Braves and the Falcons in the same day. See, Deion Sanders was a different type of guy. He never marched to the beat of the traditional drum. Deion Sanders had MC Hammer, the biggest star in the world, on the sidelines. Where do you think Drake gets all that from? Every team that he's going to support. Ain't nothing new under the sun. He got that from Deion. That's what MC Hammer was doing. First time we ever saw it. Falcons were back in black. So legit to quit. Dion all in the video. Hammer all on the sideline at the playoffs. Yeah. That was Dion. So for everybody, for every kid like me who loved it, who at College Park, Little League Field, Bill Badger Field, where legends are made, where we're high-stepping into the end zone, where the first time we take the helmet off and we see that steam come off, it's not a bald head, it's not a fade, it's a bandana like Dion. So for the people like the people like that, right, that's our kind of talk. But th there's a whole another section of people who don't subscribe to that. They say, take that bandana off. It's not tradition. Perfect example, case in point. God bless the dead. Tim McCarver. The Deion Sanders-Tim McCarver incident rubbed so many people the wrong way that even today, people still fault Deion for that. And everybody has their right to their own opinion. And for background, Deion Sanders played in a baseball game and a football game the same day. And Tim McCarver, who... And this is a part I think a lot of people miss in this situation. Tim McCarver wasn't just a broadcaster. It wasn't like Dion was just picking on some puny media guy. Tim McCarver was an all-star catcher and a two-time World Series champion. Tim McCarver was that guy in his day. I'm a baseball fan, so I'm going to keep it a buck. Now, a lot of people may not have agreed with his takes when it came to the media, but you cannot take away who Tim McCarver was as a baseball player, an athlete, and a man. So did. He says what he says about Deion, a young Deion Sanders, who I don't think would have reacted this way today, goes and throws buckets of water on him in a uh, post-game celebration. Cool. You're a real man, Deion. That quote comes out, right? Did. So many people still remember that to this day. So many people still remember what Deion brought to the game and didn't like it. He was as polarizing as Allen Iverson was when he came into the NBA with the tattoos and the, and, and the braids. Same thing with Dion. Some people aren't going to subscribe to that brand, and they never will. Some people aren't going to like the way that you pop your flavor, so to speak, right? Yeah, they're not, but that's okay. But if we're just digging into why, part of the reason why is because Deion Sanders, the player, is who people still see when they see Coach Prime. Now, it also works for Deion, you know, and I get into this lightly because, dog, Deion Sanders is a living legend in the community. In this culture, the culture I'm from, dog, and it's not a black and white thing. We're talking about hip hop, not even just hip hop. We're talking about the culture that supersedes sports now. We're talking about swag surfing. We're talking about OT7, the celebrations that they do. We're talking about football and sports. What Muhammad Ali started, Deion Sanders carried that. That's part of the culture. That's part of the whole attitude. Some people are never, will just never like that. But why? Let's go into the next point. Tradition 
versus the culture. See, college football has a tradition that is longer and as American as apple pie. College football rivals baseball. That's America's sport. It's not the NBA. People love the NFL, but college football has been going on for longer than both, right? You have traditionalists that clutch their very pearls when they say when they see Deion Sanders carry on the way he does. When they see Deion Sanders being himself authentically, they can't stand it. Bear Bryant would never. Pat Dye would never. Vince Dooley hasn't ever. That's what you hear, right? When you have such a tradition-rich game, people aren't going to like the fact that somebody is coming in and doing it in a way that people feel like he should not do it. It's not what they're used to. And usually, when people don't understand something, they hate it. They don't like it. We hear it all the time. What is hate based in? A lack of knowledge. Ignorance is what hate is based in. And I'm not trying to take this further along than what I'm what I'm saying right now. Who I am taking it is, there are people that wake up in the morning and don't like to see Deion Sanders on their screen. Why? The way he walks, the way he talks, they sound like Kendra Lamar. Because there's a reason. There, there's no real reason outside of he's doing things differently than I've seen and I don't get it. Why does he have to do that? Why is he running his mouth? The people I look to don't run their mouth that way. The people that I looked up to in college football as my head coach would never wear that. Why does he have those gold chains on? All of that. So people naturally aren't going to appreciate a guy that goes out and talks the way Dion does. And I get it. I understand it. But I'm just going to say it where nobody else is touching it. There are people that just wake up in the morning ready to go hate on Colorado. There are just as many people who watch Colorado's games to see Dion lose and Colorado lose just as much as people tune in to see him win. The hate is strong, dog. It is. And I just want to dive into the reasons why. Another reason is because I think Dion makes it look too easy, right? And some people feel like he isn't taking this job seriously. Well, how is he not taking this job seriously? Right now, he's probably having, of anybody in the spring transfer portal, I think Colorado's right number one. He's working hard. His method is unorthodox. He's not doing high school visits. He's not doing what you're supposed to do. So people don't like it. Well, guess what? Colorado's okay with it. So, and if you really, let's just break it down. If you take, if you base this purely off of wins and what he did in year one, he took a 1-11 team and added three wins. Get your favorite college football guy whose team was not in the playoffs. They could have been in the playoffs. Anybody but Michigan last year and tell them what they'd like to improve their win-loss record last year by three games. Think Auburn wouldn't have taken three games last year? Hmm. Think Georgia wouldn't have taken three more games? That means they win That, that means they win it all. If they won three more, beat Bama, get in the playoffs, win that championship, that's three more. You think Ohio State won and won the three more? Think Florida State didn't want a shot at three more? You know? It only have you think Mississippi State wouldn't have wanted three more? Think Texas AM wouldn't have wanted three more? You get the point? But that three doesn't stand up as much because guess what? Dion came in, Coach Sanders, Coach Prime came in and said he believes they're a playoff team. His goal was the playoffs. Well, what should it be? If he would have went out and said he wanted to win seven wins, it'd have been a problem. Hmm? But it's a problem because he had playoff expectations and he fell, he fell short. Yeah, it is a problem. But to the people who really look at college football and you say three wins ain't bad. If he gets another three wins on top of that, that's a successful season. Coach, but it ain't what was said. It was who was saying it. 
See, this ain't a Colorado hate job. This ain't a Jackson State hate job. It was never about that. It was about Coach Prime. And they say, Coach Prime, if you don't want people to talk about you, then don't make it about yourself. Who else he's supposed to make it about? He the head coach. What you want him to do? Huh? Shut up and dribble? <laughs> yeah, that's what you want. Shut up and coach. I don't like my coach with all that back talk. Yeah, no. Nah, it's 2024. So the reasons that you hate Colorado, let's just call them. It ain't that. You don't like Dion. Soon as the kid comes out and says, oh, well, he told me to go away. It's oh, or he told me I wouldn't play here. Man, that happens in every college program. But it wasn't Deion Sanders's. It wasn't Coach Prime's college program. Yeah. But it's okay. I get it. So this is my message to Dion. Coach Prime, the jury's out, but I'm going to tell you this, Coach. Go out there and win. Not just for you, but go win for the culture. Go show people that it can be done in a non-traditional fashion. Drake in my industry is Josh Payton. He's the prototype. He's the guy. I'm nothing like him, but I believe I can win and I'll be big one day. I do believe that. I truly believe that. And I'm saying that today. That's the inspiration. That's the type of fight. That's the type of passion that it takes in order to overcome what people say that you shouldn't be able to do. Coach Prime, this is my message to you. Outside of that, the only other thing that I can see you do, and which I think that Coach Prime is holding as a secret weapon, when he goes to a high school, it's going to be like Woodstock. I'm telling you, if Coach Prime starts visiting high schools, they better look out. Recruiting is going to look a thousand percent different. The day he goes, I'm telling you, I'm calling it right now, and I think Coach Prime is going this year. I think Coach Prime is going to go to a high school, and I guarantee you, the guy that he goes to see, it'll be they will be very hard pressed to tell him no. When you see the celebrity, the attention, the media, the aura, the glow, everything that goes along with Colorado at a high school, it hasn't been seen yet. Not another coach in the country can do it. I'm sorry. And I love Kirby Smart. When he pulls up to the helicopter, people take a picture and they move on. If Deion Sanders goes to a high school, it's going to be cinema. Straight up. Cinema. So, coach, do it for the culture. Win.